All right. At this stage, we are going to summarize everything we have been discussing so far on how to write a superb CV using this CV template you are looking at on your screen. Now, this CV starts with your name. You know, the first thing the recruiter wants to know about you is your name. For example, on this template now, the name is John Smith. In your own case, it can be Kolawole Arowolo. It can be Chibuzo, Chinonzo. And if you have three names on your uh, on your credentials, it might be Olarewadu, Kayode, Abiodo. But what is important here is that the name on your CV must reflect the name on your credentials. The arrangement of the name on your CV must tally with the name arrangement on your credential. For example, if the name on your credential is starting with your surname, let it also start with your surname on your CV. So the alignment of the names on your CV and your credentials are very important. So that is the first thing the recruiter wants to know about the person that is applying for the advertised position. So the second thing that is important here is the contact detail. The recruiter will also look at your contact detail. For example, if the recruiters uh, are looking to employ somebody residing in Lagos, for example. So this is where they are going to know where you currently reside. So your address will reflect the state where you currently live. It is also very important and it must be detailed. It must explain exactly where you live, the area, the territory, the local government. It has to be very detailed. Then the second thing they want to know, which is extremely important, is your phone number. The means through which the employer will contact you is either through your phone number or through your email. So it is very important that at this juncture, you put a very functional phone number that you know that anytime you are called, it should be very available and you'll be ready to pick it up at any particular point in time, whether during the day or in the night. You can be reached at any particular point in time. We should also cultivate the habit of reading our text messages because some of us, we have text messages of days or weeks that we have not opened at all. It is very important to state it at this stage is that the recruiter might not likely reach out to you to come for the interview after you have gone through your CV by calling you. There is a possibility that the means of contacting you will be through the text message. And in Nigeria, the recruiter, they are fond of the fact that they give you a notice of interview that will be very short. For example, they can contact you to this evening and ask you to be available for the interview 9 a.m. tomorrow. So if you are the kind of person that does not read your text messages regularly, it means that you might need that opportunity and it might turn out to be a golden opportunity. So please, please, when you are looking for a job, it is very important that you pick up every call that comes to your phone and every text message that you receive. And also put a prompt on your phone that will alert you that a text message has just come in and that will keep reminding you that you have text messages pending that you have not read. It is also important. Likewise, your email also is very important. Some recruiters, some employers, they may not reach out to you through your phone. It might be through your email. So you have to constantly be checking your email every day. Like I said earlier, they are going to give you a very short notice between the time they contact you 
and the time they expect you to appear for the physical interview or online interview as the case may be so you cannot afford not to be reading your mail like every one hour if possible so please also ensure that your email is functional and you are online at all time it is very important as well so that is the most important one of the most important things that the employers are looking out for on your details now the next thing i'll talk about here is what we call your summary or your profile now we are explaining these things your summary is just like your brand your summary is what will explain in details who you are in few in few ways don't let me even say sentences because the summary is not expected to be more than like two three sentences so you have to go and learn the skill of summarizing your details your profile to reflect exactly what the employer is looking for so here i have already told you how to write your details your profile it should not be abstract it should be speaking directly to what the employers are looking for in the person they want to recruit so let it be very direct let it be detailed at the same time be a summary and speak directly like i said to the skills that the employer are looking for so your summary is very important and remember i also told you that the recruiter has an average of six seconds to glance through your cv to know whether you qualify or not so this six seconds part of this six seconds or most part of this six seconds will be spent in reading through your summary so if your summary does not prove that you are the one they are looking for the likelihood that they will go through the rest of your cv is very very slim so let your summary be very scintillating let it be captivating let it be sweet let it be what they are looking for so it's very key and very important so the next year is experience now if you are an experienced person and they want to hire you as a, a, an experienced hire let your work experience come first before your educational background and in lifting your work experience let your most recent experience your, your most recent job function come first then downward like that but please in your most recent job function that is coming forth ensure that something that is very related to this case your will be employer is looking for is captured there very clearly they want to see it there and in every job functions you are listening where you have worked before make sure it is very relevant to what your recruiter is looking for this one also is very very important and you must not overlook it so don't just go there and be lifting your job your work experience it has to be in sequential order from the most recent to the least recent and when you are lifting your job experience work experience please ensure that you accompany with dates for example between 1995 to 1998 i was working with xyz bank then you summarize what you did during that job during that job uh, uh, during the period you were with bank x y and z please don't overlook it it is very important the date range with which you underwent that work or you performed that duty in XYZ bank must be stated clearly. We are still on how to correctly put our experiences on our CV the way the employers want to see them. Now, I talk about the importance of putting the date range of the period you acquire the experience on your CV. For example, 
look at what I'm pointing out on the screen here. This person worked as a senior web developer between 2015 to 2019 in Vision Multitone.net company. So it is very important that you put the date range, you put the name of the company, then you put the position that you occupied during the period you are working in that company. Now, underneath the position, you are going to list your job functions, your role, most importantly, what you accomplished when you are working as a senior developer, senior web developer in this particular company. And when you are listing these functions, please don't write them like sentences. It is better you put them there as bullet points so that at a glance, the recruiter we see what you are trying to communicate and they will understand and they will draw conclusion whether you have the prerequisite experiences or not. So when you are narrating your job function, please, once again, let it be a bullet point. For example, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, here we have this is an example, a typical example of how to arrange your work experience on your CV. Now, let's look at this. This person is applying as a customer service representative to a company called Computer Company LLC. Now, if you look at your screen very well, you will see that this particular company is where the applicant is currently working and that is how the date is put in this way 2016 till present so what you are telling the recruiter that as we speak as you are writing this application as you are submitting this application you are still working with this company now let's see how you arrange your work experience on your cv number one you will see that the work experiences are listed in bullet points. They are not written as sentences. You don't need to write story here. Just put the relevant point and let it show. So that is exactly what this person did here. He highlighted the work experiences in bullet point. Secondly, you will notice that when he was writing this work experience, he was not using something like, I was organizing or I was supervising customer service or I was implementing or I did this, I did that. No, you put your work experience in simple past tense without using whether he or she or I or we. So here you will see number one here, supervised in past tense, supervised customer service training program that grew customer engagement by 35%. Implement new office layout that enhance communication between staff. One employee of the year twice, in bracket 2017-2019. Now, before I move forward, when you are writing your work experience, please, the recruiter is interested in what you actually achieved. And you know, when you are putting out what you achieved, you have to prove it that you actually achieve it. That is why sometimes it is very important to put quantitative measure when you are writing your work experience. Let it be quantitative. Don't let it be abstract like we discussed earlier on. So if you look at this number one now, supervised customer service training program that do customer engagement by 35%. This 35 percent, you must highlight it. It's very important. They want to know how you achieve the result. Yes, it is good you are supervising customer services training program, but what did you achieve at the end of the day? And that is why this one is there, 35 percent. Look at number two again. Implemented new office layout that enhanced communication between staff. It wasn't that you just implemented the new office layout. What did you achieve with it? It enhanced communication. Now look at the third one, one employee of the year twice. You know, 
everything this person is talking about here is what he or she achieved working in this position and that is what they want to know it is not enough to say that i was uh, i was i was uh, in charge of uh, the register i was the one you know receiving the customer when they come to our organization the question is how did you receive them did you receive them correctly politely were the customer happy about the way you received them these are the things your recruiter want to see on this part of your cv now the fourth one here end highest performance rating across seven consecutive months for resolving customer problem this one also is quantitative because it's telling you that he earned is performance ratings across seven consecutive months that is continuously he was the one getting this rating so it is very important so the point i'm trying to stress here is that in writing your job experience the job function what they want to see is your achievement be clear about that state it out very clearly you don't need to beat about the bush in writing it go straight to the point the same thing applies to some other position. This one is for nurse. Working work with Wellness Hospital, by ID, between 2001 to 2014, what did he achieve? Manage critically he patients. He put, he or she put the number, 20 plus, oh my word. So it didn't just end it with manage critical e patients. But he substantiated it with figure. Now look at the total cared for 1,000 plus patients in ICU and provided pre-operative care. I hope with all the explanation on how to write your experiences on your CV, we are all clear now. And we are going to write it differently from how we used to write it before we undergo this training. So let's note all these points and stop making the mistakes that we have been making that have been denying us our dream job we have been pursuing these years. Now let's go back to our slide. The next thing we are talking about is the education, your educational background. This one also is very, very important because in every job at bat, they usually state the level of education they expect you to possess before you apply at all. Some will say that you must have second degree. Some will tell you that they only need first degree from you. Some will tell you that professional qualification specific ones are compulsory. Some will tell you that additional professional qualification will be added advantage. So before you set out to write your educational background, look at the educational requirements of the position you are applying for. So when you are listing your educational background, let your most recent education attainment be the first one you are listing and downward like that just exactly the same format of your work experiences for example if you have a master's degree let it come first now what i want to point out here is that if a job requirement is that you must have a master's degree in economics that you you have a master's degree in administration that doesn't mean that you cannot see list this educational attainment on it but where you are going to do justice to it is that you cannot go through the courses that you did when you are undergoing your master's degree in administration and you highlight the economic aspect the courses economic courses that you did when you are doing your master's program you cannot list it under your master's uh, degree that you have already written at this position i'm pointing out on your cv so you can now systematically 
wisely highlight those courses and what those courses entail as long as they are very related to economics. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you must have a master's in economics before you can apply, but you can just uh, to take out those aspects of that master's degree where the discourse or the thought economics elaborately and put it there. So what I'm saying is that after lifting the year you achieve that your master's degree, the name of the school will follow. Then the name, the specific master's degree that you achieve will come here. And underneath, you can list some courses. You don't need to put the name of the course. Just highlight what those courses entail so that they know that you are taught in this area when you are undergoing your master's degree in administration despite the fact that the specific requirement of the of the job is that you should have a master's degree in economics remember i told you that you don't need to meet the job requirement 100 percent before you can apply once you meet the requirement 60 to 70 percent you are good to go so like i said you lift your most recent uh, education achievement to be the first followed by your first degree you can put your secondary school uh, uh, educational background if most especially if you are uh, uh, a fresh graduate you are just seeking for you don't have the uh, the uh, substantial number of work, work, work experience to display here you can put your secondary school degree and what you actually achieved you can actually put it there but if you are an experienced hire and you have a quite number of years of experience in your hand, you may do away with your secondary school degree. So the most important thing here is that don't just lift your degree. For example, if by saying master's in administration finish, the number two uh, BSc in administration finish. No, after you have listed your master's in administration please list some of what you are taught in school that are very relevant to the position that is being advertised all this will put you at a very advantageous position and you prove to the recruiter that you actually possess some skills from your school that can make you fit in to be the person you are looking for to occupy the position that is open in that organization so do well to put everything here then apart from a formal education your professional uh, qualification can come next just directly after or immediately after your education your professional qualification can come here that is where they are asking you whether you are a chartered accountant whether you're a chartered banker probably it was stated in the job description that being a chartered accountant or being a chartered banker will be an added advantage. You have to lift it there clearly. But if you don't have the specific professional qualification you're asking for, but in your qualification, when you are writing your exams, what you're actually looking for are relevant, for example, to economics because they're actually looking for somebody that, or, 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 or accounting if they are looking for a chartered accountant. But for a chartered banker, then when you are doing this course, you realize that there are some aspects of accounting that you actually did, you wrote an exam on them and you passed, you can leave them out. After you have stated that you are a chartered a banker, then you can systematically maybe pull it from at least part of that, those uh, accounting experiences or qualification or courses that you think are germane to the position you are asking for. So it is very important to also state it clearly. Once again, let me remind you, you don't have to be qualified 100% or you don't have to meet the job requirement 100% before you can apply for the position. Once you are 60 to 70%, you are good to go. Now, some other aspects that come next after you have stated your professional qualification are what we call all these professional skills. They are not professional qualification, they are skills. They are skills you may have certification for them. You may not have certification to them, but you must be able to demonstrate that you can perform this case. 
Now look at the way it is. They are highlighted here. Photoshop. You have skin Photoshop. How much screen do you have Photoshop? It is shown by this bar. You may show it by percentage. You may show your own by rating. You can let them know that you are just learning. You can you, you can let them know that you are moderately skilled. You can let them know that you are you can conveniently work as a Photoshop person. You can also let them know that you are an expert when it comes to Photoshop. You can also tell them you are a professional in the field of Photoshop. If that is very relevant to the position they are advertising for, all that professional skills here, illustrator, in design, MS Word, ML Excel, you can also put all this there. There will be an added advantage for you if you put them there and they are relevant to the position they advertise. So don't shy away from putting all this on your CV when you are writing them. But the point we have been emphasizing all this while is that you must relate this case to the job description that the employer is advertising. It's very key. Don't just blindly be putting all this case there if they do not have any correlation with the position you are applying for. You must, by one way or the other, relate the two together so that they will sync together. So have it at the back of your mind when you are writing your education achievement professional qualification and professional skills on your CV. Now, let's go to the part where most job seekers pay very least attention to, but unfortunately, is extremely important in this our century when you are looking for a job. Now, you see this part where I put follow me it has a lot to do with your social media activities, your behavior on social media. Now, you can put your Facebook uh, handle, you can put your LinkedIn handle, you can put your Twitter handle, you can put your Instagram handle. You can put all these handles so that your recruiter, your will-be employer will be able to log on to them to know more about you. Remember, I said your CV should not be unnecessarily too long. Maximum of two pages is enough for your CV. If possible, make it a page. So in case there are still some things that you have involved yourself in, like extracurriculum activities, your achievements, your writing skill, and you believe you think the recruiter need to know about you can put your social media handles here for them to log on to them and check you out but believe me even if you don't put your social media handle three out of five recruiters the employers will use your name and search for you on social media because they want to know how you have been behaving on social media this thing seems very simple but it is one of the major reasons why most people are not getting called for the interview because they realize that on social media, they are very irresponsible and they realize that a lot of things they discover on social media are very contrary to what they put on their CV. Their social media is saying one thing about them. Their CV is saying another thing entirely. So they put that kind of person down as being dishonest and believe me, no sensible, serious organization who want to employ a person that has been perceived to be dishonest. So what this thing is telling us is that we have to be responsible in our social media activities. Don't engage in argument blindly. Don't display religion fanatism on social media don't display tribal bigotry on social media. You have to prove in your activity on social media that you are a very tolerant person. No organization will be ready to employ somebody that cannot tolerate other people's belief, that cannot tolerate other people's religion, that cannot live and let live, that cannot work as a team. Because in a workplace, we are going to be interacting with a lot of people with different religious background, tribal background, 
and growth background. So it is very necessary we develop the attitude of working well with people so that we work as a team to achieve the organization overall objective. So please and please, if you are the kind of person that have not been mindful of what you have been doing on social media, this is the time to get it right. If you know that you have posted a lot of things that even you yourself believe are not meant to be done on social media, go and delete them now. They might be the stumbling block that have been stopping you from getting your dream job. And I'll have a word of advice for our ladies, most especially if you are the kind of person that is fond of posting semi nude on social media, please go back now and delete them. This may be an impediment for you in getting the job you have been pursuing. So in summary, our social media and those, our activities on the social media are critical part of the things the recruiters usually consider before they finally call us to come and assume a duty and put us as part of the employee in their organization. So let's be very responsible in what to write. Let's avoid heated argument. Let's avoid causing people. Now I will highlight one examples of what prevented a very brilliant candidate that was qualified almost 100% for the position being advertised what denied that particular person from getting that job. Upon verifying the social media handle of this person, because they will use your name to search the social media to actually get to know what you are doing. So when they conducted the search on this particular person, they will realize that there was a particular point in time this person was saying something very negative about this same organization he's applying for. And to me, the matter was what the person was spreading on social media was not true. It was completely false. It was the information that was not verified. So he was saying something to put that organization down. And this time around, a few years down the line, he was applying for, that same, for a position in that same organization. When they saw it, they smiled and they rejected him outrightly. This shows us that whatever we are going to put out there on social media, let's be very responsible about it. Let's verify our fact very well before we push it out because we might be killing some people's business ignorantly with false good. We might be putting some other people down with false good. So it's better to remain neutral or not say anything at all if you don't have a verified information about the information you are putting out on social media. Please, it's very key. Let's go back to our social media now and rearrange what we have been writing there and delete some if possible so that they will not count against us by the time we are undergoing the recruitment process. So the last stage here that I will talk about is reference. Before I talk about the reference, yes, you can also talk, we can also talk briefly about the hobbies. Some people put hobbies on their CV. But it's, it's, it's good if you put hobbies on your CV, it's not totally bad, but you don't need to fill your CV with hobbies just because you want your CV to be full. Just put very few ones and relate that hobby to the position you are applying for. If possible, it is very important to do that. Now to the reference, some, some CVs don't usually carry your references. It is not a must that you put references on your CV nowadays, but if you can put, there is nothing that will count against you if you put them there. But if you don't put them there, when they get to the stage of asking for your for your ref references, the organization will definitely ask for the references. But if you feel comfortable that you want to put them there, you can as well put them there. In fact, the fact that you put the names of organizations names of some people on your on your CV might be a plus to you by the time they're going through your CV. Maybe the person is a notable, well known, well respected person that probably has worked in that organization before with a good track record. That one counts for you as a plus. So there's nothing wrong if you put references on your CV. You can also put references, even if it is better to put references of the people you have worked with that can attest to your working style, your acumen, your skill. Your, your emotional intelligence, 
people that can vouch for you that yeah this person work with me as you support in time and the kind of person that would like to work with over and over again so it will be very good if you can put such references on your cv so in summary this is the what you have been discussing so far from the beginning of how to write a very superb scintillating cv that the recruiter will find very difficult to overlook it's very important now we'll be going to the next and the last part of this training which is question and answers we we'll have a lot of questions and answers i'm sure all this while that you have been undergoing this training some questions are popping up on your mind i hope this question and answer aspect will answer most if not all the questions you have at the back of your mind by the time we are through with it so let's move to the next stage question and answer